Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. My name is Ben. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting development going on with the FTX case, how it has to do with their bankruptcy. And one Dan Freeberg, there are some people that are not happy with Dan Freeberg and want to make him testify. He has been the most silent, shadowy figure in this entire case. Uh, and we're going to take a look at what they're trying to do right now to get him out. So back on January 12th, our friend, Sam Bankman Freed, you guys know, great friend of the channel. We love Sam. We even went to his house in the Bahamas, as you guys know. He did this FTX pre-mortem overview. So SBF has been pushing back against this idea that they needed to go through bankruptcy in the beginning. He's saying everything is solvent. There's no problems. Somebody shared a video. So this is the greatest video ever on the internet. I think Scott Milker said it. It's where a lady has a baby in her hand and she sees a little carrier that the kid should be in and she sees the kids missing and she forgets the kids in her arm and she's running around and she's looking for the baby and then she goes, oh, there's the baby. That's kind of like Sam Bankman Freed running around looking for all this money for FTX. We know the money's all there and he knows the money's all there, but he knows that it's hidden in a lot of different places. So this is where I really want to get to here. You can see he shows the balances. He says, oh, you know, we don't need bankruptcy, blah, 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 blah. But a lot of the issues here have to do with Sullivan and Cromwell. So senators have raised concerns about a potential conflict of interest from Sullivan and Cromwell, the bankruptcy attorneys. Contrary to SNC's statement that they had a limited and largely transactional relationship with FTX, SNC was one of the FTX International's two primary law firms. And if, hey, if you're a law firm for FTX, you did a great job. <laughs> now, what's interesting here is they try to position themselves as they are the only people that can be in charge of this bankruptcy. Well, here we have FTX defending the choice of the law firm to guide through the bankruptcy. So scroll down here. Collapsed crypto exchange FTX will try to convince a judge at a hearing on Friday to sign off on its hiring of lawyers and financial advisors amid allegations that its chosen law firm's prior work for FTX creates a conflict of interest. Of course, if you worked with FTX as a law firm before and you missed all the compliance errors that were going on, you don't deserve to be able to walk them through bankruptcy. It doesn't make any sense. The U.S. Department of Justice Bankruptcy Watchdog has asked U.S. Bankruptcy Judge John Dorsey in Wilmington, Delaware, not to approve FTX's hiring of Sullivan and Cromwell, arguing that the elite New York law firm has not disclosed sufficient information about its past ties to FTX, including the fact that FTX's U.S. General Counsel, Ryan Miller, is a former partner at the firm. Former top attorney Daniel Friedberg also opposed Sullivan and Cromwell's hiring, saying Thursday that the law firm had conflicts of interest stemming from its connections to Miller. Now, very interesting. What we're seeing here, we're seeing Dan Friedberg try to throw Ryan Miller under the bus, and yet Dan Friedberg hasn't said anything about SBF at all, but yet he's throwing Ryan Miller under the bus What's the deal? We've been told Ryan Miller is one of the good guys in this case, in all reality. So here's something very fascinating that has just came out. This here is a filing. Now, what is this filing about? What are they trying to do here? Objectors Warren Winter and Richard Brumman, collectively the individual objectors, hereby submit this emergency motion for the adjournment of the hearing on the above captioned application, which is currently scheduled at 10 a.m. on uh, January 20th, which uh, I believe that's today. That is today. So what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get Dan Freeberg to testify about why or why not they should hire Sullivan and Cromwell. But the key here is Daniel Freeberg, he doesn't want to be seen. He doesn't want to be heard from. He wants to do everything in the shadows. So here they're trying to get him to testify live which they're gonna have a hard time doing. Counsel for the individual objectors have never had any contact or communication with Dan Freeberg, whether before this filing or after. It appears that Mr. Freeberg styled his declaration in support of the amended objection of his own volition and certainly without consulting the individual objectors counsel or seeking their permission. So let me break this down exactly what this means. Dan Freeberg has been running on his own trying to create his own narrative, trying to put the right lawyers in place, trying to put the right people in the right positions to help push his narrative for how he thinks all this needs to break down. You have this individual objectives council, which is led by these two guys, or these two guys are at least members, Warren Wintard and uh, Richard Blumen something. Sorry, Richard. And so he's making all of these moves without consulting them, which 
is not the way this is supposed to work inside of a bankruptcy. So will Dan Freeberg actually have to testify? Well, it's a great question. We don't know. A lot of people don't know a lot of things when it comes to FTX. Of course, we know that uh, back on December 1st, the FTX ex-CEO Sam Bankman fried said he unknowingly commingled funds. There's a lot of unknowing things that have gone along here. And, and what you start to see is a pattern of behavior from people who work at FTX, whether it's Dan Freeberg, whether it's Sam Bankman fried Nobody knew anything. Nobody knows anything about what happened. And we know that's absolutely a lie. Of course, we know this Congress FTX problem. One in three members got cash from crypto exchanges bosses. Where's this money gone? We don't know. Are they going to have to claw back all that money? We've been told the answer is yes, but very few. I think they said only eight senators out of 131 have actually given money back to FTX. Remember your FTX user funds went to support senators and congressmen and congresswomen, okay? Maybe some you don't support, your money went to support. And so this money's gotta go back to FTX for the bankruptcy hearing. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but supposedly now FTX has a chance to reboot and run again. That's what John Ray, the CEO of FTX right now, the bankruptcy attorney has said is going to possibly happen. There's a chance they may be able to reopen FTX. Now, here's where this gets a little convoluted. What Sam Bankman freed and what a lot of these people were waiting on was for the market to turn around. Because if the value of Bitcoin were to go up, their insolvency problems, well, they go away. So are we going to see a new positioning as we get new people coming into crypto ready for the bull run that maybe don't know what happened at FTX or what happened at Celsius or what happened at Three Arrows Capital coming in and naively jumping back into these exchanges? I don't know. I think FTX is going to be a hard, hard sell for people because Sam Bankman fried is so out there. He's so recognizable because of his bad haircut. And I hope that bad haircut alone will be enough to keep people away from FTX. We'll continue to watch this developing story. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.